This is the first sweat with hand in EPT history as we play a hand from Joe Hashem's perspective. We're not going to see anyone else's hole cards. So, yes, Bondo has raised. James Campbell calls. All right, so in 2020, raise to 150, call 150. I think we raise to about 700. Hashem just flats with the ace queen. And top, top, I'd be feeling pretty confident here. Yep, got to be feeling good. I think play and flow, check to the preflop aggressor. And take it from there. Bondo bets 500. Yep, yeah, about a pot sized bet. Now, what do we lose to? Kings and aces and the sets. So, not too much. We've got a call from Campbell as well. I could definitely get behind a raise here. We kind of slow played ace queen pre flop, right? Yeah. So, we're a little bit disguised. We only lose to six combos of kings, six of aces. Three of fours and three of deuces, and we beat King Queen and Queen Jack and Queen Ten and Diamond draws, which we don't block. So I like a raise. Hashem calls and makes top two. So the only hand you're really worried about here is three five, which seems unlikely. Yeah, I think probably pocket fours, pocket twos from yeah. Campbell and Bondo are potentially, but it is really not too much. I think we can allow ourselves to play this one for as many chips as possible. We're also re doing really well against like ace 10 of diamonds, right? That turned top pair and has the flush draw to go with it. So I like a raise. Yeah, the check raise from Joe Hashem. And Bondo calls. Campbell got out of the way, by the way, when Bondo barreled the turn. So we're going heads up to the river. I'm very happy at this point because I think pocket fours, and even happy now because pocket fours and pocket two is very unlikely. So I'd be betting big to try and get called by something like the nut flush draw. Something like ace 10 of diamonds. It's actually a relatively small bet. 2,000 from Hashem. Shows ace and queens. What did Bondo have? Ace jack. Yep, just the one diamond, but good value from Joe Hashem. Definitely some consideration for going bigger. Once your opponent calls on the turn, they are pretty likely to have at least an ace. So could have seen a bigger sizing, but does get paid. And we are sweating with Joe Hashem once again. We're only going to see his whole cards playing this hand from his perspective. Nice. 3x open. Like it so far. Looks good. I wonder who's got the best hand here. Of course, Hashem was ahead on the two previous occasions. But on this hand, the shoe could be on the other foot. <laughs> well, you're up against two callers. Jack, six, three, flop. Don't mind a bet. That is about a pot size bet. Certainly very large by 2020 standards. And we get a call. I think Jensen, obviously capable of having a lot of jacks, but hands like four, five straight draws, probably not going anywhere with a six or indeed a three at this point. Checks again. And probably time for Joe Hashem to pot control a little bit. He does indeed. Check, check. And another jack on the river makes it a little bit less likely. That's what Jensen was calling with. depending on the sizing, which looks pretty small compared to the size of the pot. I think we see Joe Hashem look this up. And he's going to hope to see something like 4, 5, or maybe a 6, just kind of betting to try and get value from ace high or something. There are going to be some jacks, but I think enough bluffs to warrant calling. Can't say that. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you that. Jensen was in the big blind, so very capable of having 4 5, 5 7, yeah, 4 7 suited. Really, I want, you want me to call them, just can't tell me your cards. Do what you like, Joe. Yeah, why me?
He's going to call. Folds. Lays it down. Pretty did, disciplined. Did he fold the best hand? No. Good fold. Jensen had it. Queen Jack. Okay, Spraggy, we've got a sweat with hand here. We're going to play from Johnny Lodden's perspective. Oh, this should be interesting. It's Rick, the Brit at the table, who's going to raise to 150. Woody Deck is in. Ha. Patrick Bruel calls as well on the button. Farzad Hayati calls out of the small blind. Johnny has Jack, Ace Jack, in the big. And he flats. Five ways to a flop. Which is an ace, ace high flop. Eight, four. On a scale of one to confident, how are you feeling right now about Ace Jack? Uh, somewhere in between. I mean, obviously you're happy to have caught top pair, but you are five ways. Um, and, and there's certainly going to be some bad run outs for you. We've already, you know, two spades on board. We don't have a spade in our hand. And uh, Glading now betting into four opponents. You'd imagine that that's not a complete air ball. Yeah, and worth remembering that, okay, it was relatively late position, but... I would give his opening raise a certain degree of respect, not knowing much about this player. And the way he confidently continued into four opponents, I think Ace Jack is outkicked here. Yeah, good chance we're going to see, of course, the, the, the main hands you're worried about, Ace Queen, Ace King. That's why John Lodden can't really raise on the flop, because he's just isolating himself against all those hands that do have him outkicked. And a second barrel, 1500, Lodden undeterred. Interesting. Interesting, River, although it doesn't really change anything, right? Obviously, we were concerned about Ace, Queen, Ace, King before. We're still concerned about that. It might make it a little less likely that he has it and weight him more towards something like King, Queen of Spades or, or Jack, Ten of Spades. But I'd say when he bets the River, not many players are going to want to bluff the Ace. Once you've been called twice, it looks like your opponent has an Ace. So it's pretty uncommon to try and triple barrel them and, and get them to fold trips if you do have air. So I'd say Glading very strong here. I'll tell you what, Spraggy, I'll be very surprised if Glading doesn't have Ace King or Ace Queen. He's done a very good job of selling it. Wow, he had better than that. He flopped a set of eights and improved to a full house on the river. Okay, time to play a hand from Mr. Boatman's perspective. We're going to sweat with Barney now. Oh, good hand to start. The King Queen offsuit. He's going to raise. So it's raising 500, which means it's a raise to 800 chips. We're playing 150, 300. It's been called by Not too Richard far away from a, a regular race size, James. And just the one call up. I think Ashby called out of the small blind. And it is a queen high flop with two clubs. What's not to like? Not a lot, really. Pretty good. Opponent calling the small blind. I think in this era, we're going to see a lot of weaker queens. Some queen nine suited, queen ten suited, queen jack. Oh, hello. And we do get raised, which I think Barney will kind of like. I mean, queen four and queen three aren't calling preflop. You wouldn't have thought. Pocket fours, pocket threes, unlikely. Those weaker queens and flush draws are going to raise on the flop as well. So I think good decision by Barney to go all in. Barney's continuation bet was 1,000. Ashby check raised to 4,000, and Barney has now shoved. Yep, hand's certainly strong enough to go with it. I think Ashby would raise a hand like Queen-10 or Queen-Jack or Queen-9. He's going to raise something like Jack-10 of clubs on the flop as well, or 8-9 of clubs, or some nut flush draws. And given the raise size, it doesn't really make sense to just call. I think if his opponent is raising this flop, they typically have something, be it a flush or a queen, to call off with. We maybe even see a raise from something like pocket eights here, James, that now hates life. Just because protection raises, protecting against the flush draw in 2006.
Oh, Ashby's all in. He says, I'm going to gamble. Barney does not have a flush draw. He has top pair. Ashby, jack ten of clubs. One of the hands you put him on, Spraggy. Yep. Does go with it. Needs a club. Or oh, a backdoor two pair of trips. Picks up eight. River card is a club. So Ashby gets there, doubles up through Barney Boatman, who will be left very short. 